Hello, everybody, and welcome here. Welcome to the first service, well, the second service of 2023. We are so excited to be here with you, and we're really expectant for this year. You know, we're really believing that Jesus has a really significant work that he wants to do in every single one of our lives. You know, I was thinking this week about how in the Bible, when you read about Jesus meeting people and coming into people's lives, their lives are always changed. They're always impacted in some way. You know, we read about people who are paralyzed being able to walk, people who are blind being able to see, people's lives being completely changed, their habits changing, people with illnesses or sicknesses being healed because they came into contact with the person of Jesus who can do anything, who is so powerful and who cares so deeply for them. And the same is true for each and every single one of us here today. And I'm believing this year in 2023 that as we seek Jesus, as we get to know him, as we pursue him, our lives are gonna be changed. He's gonna do miraculous things in us. He's gonna restore relationships and renew our hope and heal us and transform us like only he can do because he loves us and he can do anything. And so we're gonna start off today by singing a song of worship and a song that just worships God for what we believe and what we know that he's gonna do this year and what we're so excited to see him do. And one of the lyrics in the bridge says, the dead will live, the dead will live again. And it's just this proclamation that we believe that people that have not yet experienced the life that is found in Jesus and God are gonna find that life and purpose this year. But also for those of us that know him, that the areas of our life that are dead, that Jesus wants to bring back to life, those are gonna come to life too. And we're just gonna see amazing things, far greater than we could ever imagine. So why don't you stand and join us as we worship. gospel mystery from the heavens came a savior from the ground arose a king every day is born in darkness every winter yields a spring Let us speak of resurrection Even in the suffering You can do anything You can do anything My eyes will see your glory My eyes will see your glory can do anything you can do anything my eyes will see your glory my eyes to see your glory
this gospel mystery From the heavens came a Savior From the ground arose a King Every day is born in darkness Every winter yields a spring Will you welcome resurrection? Will you crown the risen? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Jesus Still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I feel my life on Jesus He's never
Can we take a moment and just pray together? God, we thank you for a new year. God, a new year with the same God. God, we're just so thankful that in our brokenness, in our mess and stress, that you continue to redeem and restore us through your son, Jesus. God, we know that you know the heart of every person in this room. God, we know that you know the heart of every person joining online. God, I don't know what the year was like that everyone just walked through or where this one's headed, but God, you know their hearts. God, we know that there's hearts that are struggling today in this room. God, we know there are hearts that are tired and stressed out in this room. God, we know there are hearts here that are struggling with addiction and just other challenges. God, we just submit those hearts to you. God, we do believe that you are sovereign and divine, that you are Lord. God, I just pray that you would just give us strength and wisdom to just continue to seek you, to continue to follow the plan that you have for our lives and for our church. God, we don't know where you're taking us this year, but God, we know that you are good, that you actually won't fail. God, your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. God, we are thankful for that. God, we praise you and just lift up our voices in praise to you and thankfulness and gratitude. God, I just pray that you'd go before each and every one of us, go before our kids, go before the kids that you're going to bless us with this year, go before our marriages, our relationships, our friendships, our workplaces. God, just Go before us and prepare the way for us to just continue to grow in you and the work that you're gonna do in and through us and our church this year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why don't you guys take a seat? Happy New Year. My name is David, and I am one of the pastors here on staff at Southside Church, and I'm so excited that you have decided to start your year off with us in community, and it's so awesome to look around the room and see so many new faces so many people are returning from Christmas. Uh, so many people that I think are probably choosing to start their year off with Southside Church. Uh, whatever brings you here, man, we are so glad that you're with us this morning. And, and if today actually is your first day, uh, we say this every Sunday because we know that sun, every Sunday is somebody's first Sunday. But if you are returning from Christmas or your brand new first time here today, we would love to connect with you. And you can do that simply by taking out your phone. Don't worry, you, we use our phones all the time in church and text the keyword hello to 604-670-3040. And the reason we ask you to do that is we will send you a a connect card, a digital connect card back, and we ask that you fill that out so that we can actually just say hi and actually find out how we can serve you better, how we might be able to support you in the moment, even today, and it allows us to get feedback on just how your experience is with us because it really matters to us because you really matter to us and you really matter to God. And when you do that, uh, we will email you back a $5 Starbucks e-card, uh, which is just a simple token of appreciation from us to you that says, hey, thanks for checking in with us. Thank you for joining us here at SOSA, and we love that you're here with us today. So we're excited to head into 2023. And before we do, I actually just want to pause and take a chance to celebrate the Christmas season that we just walked through, because it's actually the, our first time back together since Christmas, as Christmas this year was amazing. And it took a bit of a turn because it wasn't exactly what we had planned, given that we had to cancel our services on the 23rd due to freezing rain. Um, but we really feel like God blessed us with some wisdom in that season because we felt, hey, we need to record our, our dress rehearsal in case we do have to. That way we can put this service online because we believed in it. And, and we had prayed for this goal that, you know, maybe, just maybe 5,000 people could hear this message of hope over Christmas about Jesus. And when we had to cancel services, we're like, okay, well, you know, we'll just be grateful for whoever can make it. And so we were able to still run our three services on Christmas Eve. And we ended the night with a staff photo on this stage, which is our tradition. And we found out that both online and in person, we saw 5,091 people attend Christmas at Southside. 
And due to this amazing thing called technology and online church, uh, that number's actually grown to almost 7,000 people watching our Christmas services here and hearing about Jesus, which is awesome. But cooler still, uh, we saw 40 people cross that line in their lives into faith and accepting Jesus in their life for the very first time over our Christmas services, and we can celebrate that for sure. Which means that we actually ended the year uh, with the most salvations we have ever seen in a single year at Southside Church, praise to God, and we saw over 600 people accept Jesus and enter into this eternal relationship with Jesus last year. That's so amazing, so incredible to be, be a part of. We saw so many people uh, start serving on a serving team for Christmas. What a fun way to join a team at, at Christmas at Southside. And we're excited for you know, the hundreds of people that we're hoping to add to our home team this year in 2023. So be thinking about that and praying about that, how, how you might be able to find a great fit for a team that you love to be a part of as we're growing our home team uh, here at Southside. And we'd love to have you as a part of that team. Uh, but so many things to celebrate over Christmas. Uh, and, you know, we're just so excited for where God's taken us into this new year, into 2023, is, you know, we don't know what God's gonna do. We just know that he's moving and we wanna be a part of it. And we're entering into a part of the service where we always come together and we give. And we always exercise generosity every week for a couple reasons. One is God calls us to be generous. And God calls us to give. So a big part of our faith is walking in obedience of the things God commands us to do. And one of those things is to give. And what's cool is God says that he'll be faithful to us in return. He actually promises it to us. And I know that's played out in, in my life and in hundreds of lives in this church of people that walk in generosity. And secondly, uh, one of the things that we really value is we want to be bold. We want to walk in a bold faith. And so a big part of that is, is we want to prepare, even financially, for the step that God might be preparing for us to step into this year. And man, was last year ever a testament to that. Through all his bright, through all our strategic partnerships, of all the prayers that we were able to be a part of answering uh, through generosity last year. So if you'd like to join with us, maybe that's part of your resolution starting this new year, is trusting God with every area of your life, including your finances. We'd like you to join us now as we all give by texting the word GIVE to 604 uh, 670 3040. And the link you'll get back just simply lays out the ways that you can partner with us uh, through generosity and partner with God financially, uh, whether in person or online here at Southside. And I can't wait to hear how God is actually going to respond to your step of generosity this year. I mean that genuinely. Finally, we're going to enter into the message portion uh, of today. And I'd encourage you now to silence your phones if you haven't already. Uh, commit to staying in your seat because it's an incredible message to start the year off. And I want to kind of encourage you with this thought is, you know, we often start the new year by all the things that we're going to do and that we're going to change. And we think we have so much control over these areas of our lives. And sometimes we get to this moment where, where we realize there's kind of this illusion of control, that there's actually only so much we can actually really control. And sometimes when we get to the, that understanding, it's kind of the end of our rope sometimes. And it can be Stressful, it can be anxious, we can have all these questions and doubts. And if you've ever been there, and I know I've been there, so I'm sure you have been too, uh, I just encourage you to lean into this message and really hear what God has to say to you through Pastor Mike this morning. So I love you, happy new year, enjoy the rest of the service. Well, happy 2023, everybody. I'm actually so glad to be here with you, whether you're in person or joining us online. I'm excited to jump back into this journey that we're taking through the New Testament Gospel of John. And as I say that, I realize that if you're new or newish, you might be thinking, oh wait, I'm jumping partway through something, like I'm gonna be lost. Absolutely not. Like every service that we host, every sermon that we ever preach here is meant to stand alone and today is no exception. In fact, I'll tell you this, when I <clears throat> kind of looked where we were in the Gospel of John, 
the timing was nothing short of providential. This passage is meant for you and meant for me to launch into this year. It's going to help you. It's going to challenge you. It's going to encourage you. And I think it's going to help both you and me kind of launch into this year, set a great path for this upcoming season. So let me kind of give you some perspective. Jesus has just fed 20,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And not surprisingly, they're amazed. They're saying, God's at work among us, which is great. But then something kind of changes in the mood of the crowd. They begin to look at Jesus and they say, he would make a good king. We need to make him king because he could unite us. He could motivate us. He could mobilize the Jewish people and we could kick the Romans out of our country. In fact, the passage says that they were planning to force Jesus to become king. It's a really interesting thought. Because if you look at the Gospels, if you look at the story of Jesus, you'll notice that he turned water into wine. He healed people. He fed thousands of people with just those loaves and fish. He talked to people about giving them peace and rest and a sense of joy and a sense of wonder. He also revolutionized the way that people look at resources and generosity and changed the way that we care for each other and look after one another. And yet Jesus was constantly saying, I didn't step into human history on a mission that is primarily physical or emotional or financial, and definitely not political. But here these people are, and you get the sense that they're chanting, King Jesus, King Jesus, King Jesus, like in a really forceful way. But it got me thinking that probably the most disconcerting moment that day for Jesus wasn't the 20,000 people who had just met him. It was that his 12 disciples who had been with him for over a year at that point, they were with the crowd chanting, King Jesus, King Jesus, King Jesus. So we pick up the story in John chapter 6, verse 16. It says this, In the evening the disciples went down to the sea, got in the boat, and headed back across the water to Capernaum. Now Matthew and Mark tell the same story in their Gospels, but they're a little, more, a little bit more forceful. They say Jesus made his disciples get in the boat. He made them get in the boat. Jesus is looking at his disciples saying, you know what, I get these 20,000 people who just met me, but I've told you over and over again that my purposes are a lot deeper than political or physical, or emotional, or financial, and yet there you are chanting. So he says, we're going for a little, you're going for a little boat ride. You're going for a little ride. And, and you know what? We're going to go on that ride with the disciples today. Jesus says, I'm a lot deeper than political. Before we do, I want to acknowledge something. I'm not sure if you thought of it. This January, it's been three years, three years, since we've been able to launch into a church season in January without masks. It's been three years since we've been able to have church in January without capacity restrictions. And I think we should acknowledge the three years that we've just lived through. In fact, I wanted to acknowledge to you today, I think you did well. You made it through. I'm really proud of you. Because it hasn't been an easy three years. Whether you're young or old, whether you're married or single, whether you have kids or you don't have kids, it hasn't been easy, you know? Work changed. Family changed. School changed. Seasons of sports just got canceled. Music, arts, drama got canceled. We had these quarantines where all of a sudden you couldn't go out and see people that you really, really loved. And at the same time, you were cooped up with people that, yeah, you love them, but it was a lot of time and the close quarters. It was a challenge. I just wanted to acknowledge that and say, you did well. I'm proud of you. You made it through. And I want to acknowledge the elephant in the cultural room right now. That three years has brought us to a place where I would say, in my lifetime, I've never seen our culture this political. 
I've never seen it. And I want to explain why, and to a degree, this is an introduction of the entire sermon. Why do we get so political? Well, the answer to that is actually quite simple. When our illusion of control is shattered, when our illusion of control is shattered, one of the responses that we might have is this, desperately try to take it back. When our illusion of control is shattered, one of the responses that we might have is desperately try to take it back. Politics does that. Politics makes me say, well, you know what? This wouldn't have happened except for him or her or them. And we can fix it all if people would just listen to me and us. Politics for some is an attempt to take back the illusion of control. Now, let me be clear. I think you should vote. (laughs) I think you should be politically informed. And if God calls you to run for office, whether in our city, in our province, in our nation, to serve his people, I definitely think you should do it. But what I see in our culture today is a hyper-focus, a fixation, an obsession to the degree that we have people sitting on the edge of their seats watching elections in other countries. Thinking that if my candidate wins, I win. And if my candidate loses, I lose. What I would suggest to you is a hyper-focus on politics, a fixation, an obsession, is not the road that God is calling you to travel in 2023. Much like Jesus told the disciples 2,000 years ago, we're going to go on a little ride today. We're going to go on a little ride today. C.S. Lewis talked in Mere Christianity. He says, A hyper-focus on politics comes from a fundamental error. We have come to believe that our nation is more important than individuals. We have come to believe that our nation is more important than an individual, which of course it isn't. At most, our nation will last for what, a thousand years? You know that person sitting beside you, behind you, in front of you? They will last a thousand times 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 a thousand, and they will just be getting started. Maybe I could put that a different way. As the church, our primary role, our primary um, responsibility as a church in this nation is not to love Canada. Our primary role as a church, as people who follow Jesus, is to love Canadians. So, Jesus says to his disciples, hey gentlemen, get in the boat. We're going for, you're going for a little ride, because Jesus does not go with them. It had grown quite dark, and Jesus had not yet returned. A huge wind blew up, churning the sea. It was a dark and stormy night. Madeline Lango started a wrinkle in time that way. It was a dark and stormy night. It was a dark and stormy night. Good night. Jesus knew it was a dark and stormy night. That's why he said, hey, boys, you're going on a boat ride. It's a dark and stormy night. We live in a dark and stormy world. We live in a dark and stormy world that shatters our illusion of control, doesn't it? The last three years have shown us, if we've been paying attention, that there are certain things in this world that shatter our illusion of control. There are storms. Storms in our marriages, storms in our families, storms with our kids, storms at work, storms at school, financial storms, storms in our health, storms in the health of those that we love. Last Monday night, I was watching a movie with my wife, Corinne, and when the movie ended, I said to her, hey, I want to check out what's happening on Monday Night Football, because I knew there was a great game on a great game. Two of the best teams in the NFL, the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals were playing, and I just really wanted to see what was going on. So I switched over the channel to see what was happening, but there was no game. And to be completely truthful, I was timing the movie in a certain way. I knew that the game should be on, okay? I'm just going to say that. Corinne's not here at this service, so I'll just, okay. I, I, I knew that the game should be on, but it was not on. And I said, Corinne, the game's not on. Why is the game not on? This is going to be a really, really good game. Why is the game not on? And so I just kept it on the channel, and then I listened, and I found out that a young man, a 24-year-old kid, 
named Damar Hamlin, cornerback for the Buffalo Bills, with six minutes left in the first quarter, went to make a tackle. He got up from making his tackle and then fell back down again and had a full cardiac arrest. Medical officials streamed onto the field to literally bring Damar Hamlin back to life as the players from both teams stood there openly weeping. Now, I should mention up front that as of today, it looks like Damar Hamlin's going to make a full recovery, but in that moment, in that moment, we see this is a dark and stormy world. And our illusion of control can be shattered. Former NFL player Ryan Clark said this, I think the first thing, this is about Damar Hamlin. It's about a young man at 24 years old that was living his dream. That a few hours ago was getting ready to play the biggest game of his NFL career, and there's probably nowhere else in the world he wanted to be. And now, he fights for his life. It's a dark and stormy world. It's a dark and stormy world, and our illusion of control gets shattered. And the question is, what next? Perhaps not surprisingly, on social media, only minutes after Damar Hamlin collapsed, things got political. They blamed his cardiac arrest on one political side, and the other political side blamed it on the other political side, and the outrage continued. Jesus says to his disciples, you're going for a little ride, and we're going with them. They were three or four miles out. They're rowing and rowing and rowing. They're not getting anywhere. Three or four miles out, when they saw Jesus walking on the sea quite near the boat, they were scared senseless. They were scared senseless. What a powerful description. Scared senseless. What a powerful description of anxiety. Scared senseless. What a powerful description to millions and millions and millions and millions of people in our culture. Scared senseless. Scared senseless. You miss your life. You can't sense the beauty of this moment. You can't sense the joy of today. You can't sense the love all around you. You miss it. Life goes by and you miss it. Why in the world would that happen? Oh, because we're scared senseless. Our illusion of control has been shattered, and we're scared senseless. When I was a kid, I did crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. I've told you some of the things. I I walked into a biker bar called The Rock Jar when I was 17 years old. I picked a fight with a whole bar twice in one night. Got beat just about to death, not surprisingly. Some of my friends from Red Deer days still say that I'm the worst driver that they've ever seen, and they're probably right. Central Alberta has all these like little highways, like two-lane highways with both directions going, and you can only pass when the line is dotted, you know? And I just found that a personal affront. It really bothered me. And if, if, if someone in front of me was going slow, which was like under 190, I felt it like just personally insulting for me. And so on a double solid, I would most definitely pass, no matter what. If there was a corner coming and and a car emerged around the corner, no problem. I would just pull over to their shoulder and continue driving. Just did dumb stuff. A story that came to me as I was preparing for today was a a particular night when I was partying with my friends in Red Deer till really, really, really late at night. Decided to drive home. Our family had moved from northwest of Red Deer, Alberta in the country to southeast of Red Deer, Alberta in the country. And so I'm driving home on Highway 2, which is a four-lane divided highway, late, late, late at night, south from Red Deer towards Calgary. No one else on the road. It's late at, late at night until I see a set of headlights coming the other way. And when we meet, I look over, and red and blue lights start to flash on top of this vehicle. And I realized this is a divided highway. It's going to take them a little while to get onto my direction, my side. So the last thing I remember that night, the last thing I remember that light, the last thing I remember is I turned off my lights and I floored it. I woke up the next morning 
It's a minor miracle, you know. I woke up the next morning in an RV. I was going to say, hey, you're not making this up, but why would I? Let's be real, okay? So I, 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 I woke up in an RV that I had never seen before, that I had never been in before. No blankets, no pillow. I'm just in this RV on this cushioned bed, and I get up, and the door of the RV is partway open. I push it the rest of the way open, and I look, and there's my car with the driver's door open. So the way this lot was situated, I was on an acreage with a driveway, and at the, at, the, at the top of the driveway was a house, and then the driveway continued all the way to the back of the acreage, and that was where I had slept that night. Not surprisingly, I was really bewildered and confused. I was trying to figure out, how did I get here? Kind of a weird feeling, to be honest. Like, how did I end up sleeping in this RV? So I decided to walk up to the house. I was at the front of the yard, and I knocked on the front door, and then I rang the doorbell, and then I knocked, and then I rang the doorbell, and eventually a man came with his robe and his slippers, and as he was opening the door, I realized I had no idea what I was going to say to him. Like, the thing you probably don't say in that moment is this, <laughs> dude, you won't believe it, I slept in your RV last night, isn't that crazy? That's probably not a good thing to say. Nor did I feel like, when he opened the door, I should say this, how did I get here? It's a little heavy for like whatever time in the morning it was. I have no idea what time it was. So I opened the door and I said the only thing that I could think of. I looked at him and I said, was there a party here last night? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and I looked at him and he looked at me and I could tell he had no idea what I was talking about. So I wandered off the stairs of his home got into my car, drove around for about half an hour on all these back roads until I put a bunch of roadsides together and figured out that I was about an hour away from home. I tell you all that because as I grew up, Jesus saved me. I stopped doing so many crazy things. But one thing that I hung on to for years and years and years and years and years and years was an illusion of control. See, I understood that it's a dark and stormy world, but honestly, I didn't think it really applied to me. I walked out of those stories, and I could tell you about 40 more, unscathed. If I was going to be scathed, I would have been scathed then, you know what I mean? Like, if, I, if this really was a dark and stormy world for me, I wouldn't have made it out of those years. So I held on to this illusion of control, and then one day, a few years ago, over the scope of several hours, I found out that three people who I really, really love were really, really sick. And my first thought was, they'll be fine. Well, of course they'll be fine. They're my friends. Bad things don't happen to me. And I would be sad if they weren't fine. So they will be absolutely fine. I'm absolutely sure of it. And I was driving in my car later on that day, and it hit me. Oh, they might not be. Sometimes people aren't absolutely fine. Sometimes Damar Hamlin doesn't make a full recovery. And I lost my illusion of control. My illusion of control was shattered, and I became scared senseless. And now I'm going to tell you something that I think might shock you a little bit. I actually think that's a good place to be. I actually think, we talk sometimes about how Jesus, if you pray, he might deliver you from the storm. He might deliver you through the storm. Well, can we be real here? Jesus made them get in this boat. He knew that he was going to bring them to a place where they were scared senseless. The question is now, so my illusion of control has been shattered, right? I think the proper response to that is scared senseless. Like up until that moment, life is good and fun and fair and sunshine and rainbows and smooth sailing and clear skies, and all of a sudden it's not, and it's like, whoa, I'm scared senseless. Now what do we do? What do we do? Well, they say when you're scared senseless, when you're really, really frightened, there's kind of three choices. Fight freeze or flight fight right we talked about that already find someone to blame could be your spouse 
Could be your prime minister. Could be somebody. Find someone to blame and be all about that. Fight, okay? The other is freeze. And then we got a lot of people in our culture that kind of travel this journey like I did, right? Kind of hanging on to the illusion of control. And then all of a sudden, it was shattered. And now they're scared senseless, but they're stuck there. They're stuck. They haven't moved on. They're just stuck in this moment of fear. Stuck in a moment called fear, scared, senseless. I see it everywhere around me. Like if I was to sit down with you one-on-one and I was to ask you about your greatest regrets, your relational breakdowns, the mistakes that you the mistakes that you wish you never would have made, I'll bet you at the core of every one of them is fear. I see it everywhere around me. We live in a culture that's stuck in this fearful moment, stuck in this fearful moment, scared senseless, but they haven't moved on. I think it's at the core of depression, It's at the core of so much hatred and so much enmity and so much anger. I think it's at the core of relational breakdowns. I think it's at the core of jealousy and insecurity, unfulfillment, dissatisfaction, ingratitude. I believe fear is at the core of that. I think it's at the core of addiction. We're stuck in this fearful moment. In fact, there's millions of people in our country, you know this, There's millions of people in our country that are so scared senseless. Not only are they missing life, like life is just flying by, and they're scared senseless. They're not seeing it. They're not hearing it. They're not smelling it. They're not touching it. It's just flying by. Not only that, but it's manifesting itself physically in their life. They have physical symptoms of this moment that they're stuck in. See, I think it was Jesus' plan to take these disciples into a place where their illusion of control was shattered. So they're not chanting, King Jesus, King Jesus. They're not political anymore. And, and, and I think it was his plan that they would be at a point called scared senseless. But we got to take a next step. I don't think fighting works. I don't think freezing works. I think the answer is flight. Run, run, run. So they say Jesus walking on the water, he reassured them, it's me, it's all right, don't be afraid. So they took him on board, in no time they reached land, the exact spot they were headed to. See, Matthew tells this same story, but he gets into a little bit more detail. Peter, one of the disciples, sees Jesus walking on the water, and he calls out, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. See, I don't think fighting works. I don't think staying here in this scared, senseless moment. I think we just watch life pass us by, but I think flight is the answer. I think we run to Jesus. I I, I think if I could tell you anything in this fearful, fearful moment, this emotionally charged culture we find ourselves in today, if I could tell you one thing to set you straight, to set us both straight in 2023, I would say this, let's run to Jesus. I'm going to give you three ways that we do that. Number one, we elevate our vision. We elevate our vision. Something amazing in this passage that Matthew wrote, he says this, that Peter saw the wind. What a weird thing to say. Peter saw the wind. How do you see the wind? I don't get it. Peter saw the wind. How does that work? Well, I think what's happening here is Peter is feeding his fears, real and imaginary. His illusion of control has been shattered. And now he's scared senseless. And and again, I don't think it's bad to have our illusion of control shattered. I think we all need to get there. There's a dark and stormy world. And sometimes I walk away unscathed like Mike Manis in the RV, but sometimes I don't. But now he's scared senseless. And he's feeding his fears. I think you and I can do the same. 
I think our social media can feed our fears. Whether that be the fear of not measuring up or the fear of missing out, I think our news feed can feed our fears. I think the articles we read, the podcasts we listen to, the people we talk to, the words that we speak, the words that are spoken to us, the words that we speak to ourselves, the shows that we watch can feed our fears. And so I think at some point, we need to elevate our vision. We need to elevate our vision. It's interesting because, so Peter saw the wind. He saw the wind. He saw the wind. He's feeding the fears, his fears. What's he really scared of? What's Peter actually scared of that day? He was scared of drowning. What are you drowning in? What are you drowning in? Like what substance does one drown in normally? H2O, yeah, H2O. Water. It's interesting because Jesus is standing on top of the water. On, t- on top of that which Peter fears the most stands Jesus. He needs to elevate his vision. He needs to elevate his vision. See, I think when we get to the point where our illusion of control is shattered, that's good. And even that momentary scared senseless, that's okay. But our next logical question should be this. In a world that now feels to me completely out of control, in ways that really, really matter, I wonder if there's somebody out there in this out of control world who is actually completely in control. And if so, I should probably look to him. That in this dark and stormy world, I wonder if there's somebody out there that can bring me light and bring me peace in this dark and stormy world. Because if there is, I should probably look to him. There's a lot of different ways that we could do that. I'm just going to give you one right now. I want to inspire you. I'm preaching to the choir. You're here. You're watching online right now. That's amazing. Keep it up. You're here right now. Keep it up. Make it a priority to be here. There's so much in this world that can feed our fears. Let's make it a priority to come together, all of us, once a week, and elevate our vision. Elevate our vision. Look higher. Aim higher. Look to the one who is completely and totally in control, who loves you absolutely and totally, who stands in above, above and beyond this dark and stormy world and says, I want to give you light, and I want to give you peace, even in the midst of this dark and stormy world. Make it a priority to be here. Invite your friends. Invite your family. Invite your neighbors. I want to change this city in 2023. And one of the ways that we need to do that is to elevate our vision. Number two, extend an invitation. So Peter's sinking. He started out strong. You got to admire him, by the way. He got out of the boat. Eleven disciples did not, right? I'm sure Peter reminded of that when they were making fun of him later, okay? He got out of the boat. That's pretty sweet. But then he starts to sink. And Jesus grabs him and throws him into the boat, right? No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Peter's beginning to sink, and then Peter calls out, Lord, save me. And then Jesus takes him by the hand and brings him to the boat. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is this. Jesus is not a bully. He's not going to force his way into any area of your life. He just won't. He could. He won't. The same John that wrote this gospel wrote the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And in Revelation chapter three, we read this. Behold, Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. The door is your heart. And he's not gonna kick the door down. He could, but he won't. So to look for one who stands above this out of control world, who offers light and peace is a good idea, but we need to invite him. And I look in our world so full of fear, so scared, senseless. And I know for some people, the greatest fear is that you just don't matter. That nobody sees, nobody notices. And I guess I just wanted to tell you that when you know Jesus, you'll know that he stepped into human history on a rescue mission. And if you were the only one in history who needed to be rescued, he would have come for you. You are not forgotten. Maybe this world has made you feel forgotten. You are not. You are not unimportant. Maybe this world has made you feel unimportant. You are not. And for others, the greatest fear is that we're never going to get past our past, that there's mistakes made that I'm never going to dust off. 
there's scars from my past that I'm never going to be healed from. And yet the Bible teaches us that Jesus died on a cross so that our hurts could be healed and our sins could be forgiven, that we could actually, actually receive a fresh start, a new beginning. And for some, our greatest fear is just this moment, this day. You know, there's millions of people in our culture today. They're scared of having a conversation. They're scared of picking up the phone. Because they're worried that if they have a conversation, they might say something wrong. They might look stupid. They might be shunned. They might be canceled. For some of us, our greatest fear is this moment, this day. And yet, not only did Jesus come, not only did he die, but he rose again. And the promise is that the same power that rose Jesus from death to life is available to us. That we'll have the strength to face today. The Bible even says that he'll give you the words to say. You don't have to be scared of those conversations. He'll be with you. And for some, the greatest fear is just the future. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next year? Worst case scenario, worst case scenario. I see the wind, I see the wind, I see the wind, I see the wind, I see the wind. And yet Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, ever. And for some, our greatest fear is death. And yet Jesus defeated death. And so while your body will wear out, and it will, you will never wear out. You were created for eternal life, all made possible through Jesus. Not eternal life of chaos and storms, but eternal life of peace and light, adventure and joy and love and fun. And a thousand times, a thousand times, a thousand times, a thousand times, a thousand years from now, you and I are going to be looking at each other saying, the best is still yet to come, and it will be. And... Jesus is not a bully. He's not going to step into any area of your life. He's not going to step into your life without being invited. So I know I have a third point, and I'm going to get to it, but I'm going to call a timeout right now, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that right now before we go any further. So let's take a moment of reflection. If you don't mind bowing your heads and closing your eyes right now. So if that's you today, somewhere along the line, your illusion of control has been shattered. You've come to that natural point of being scared, senseless, and now the next step is yours. I want to tell you, Jesus came, died, rose again. If you were the only one in history who needed to be saved, who needed to be rescued, who needed eternal life, he would have done it all for you. So today, right now, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, whether you're online or in person, if you want to invite him into your life, this is your moment. Just raise your hand right now, and I'm going to pray for you. Nice and high, if you don't mind. Amazing. That's great. If your hand is up, whether you're online or in person, you can put it down right now. God sees your hand, by the way. It's amazing. I'm going to pray out loud, and I just invite you to pray quietly with me. So Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for this spectacular moment. I just don't want to be stuck here anymore. I want to move past scared senseless. So I ask you to be my Savior, that you would heal my hurts, forgive my sins, and give me a fresh start. I invite you to be my Lord. Give me strength today, tomorrow. I'm so thankful that you have a plan, an incredible plan. It starts now and stretches into eternity. I love you, I thank you in your name, amen. Amen, let's celebrate. Okay, so we have this moment, right, when our illusion of control is shattered. Good, good, good thing. Took me way too long in my life to have my illusion of control shattered, good. And then we get to this scared, senseless moment. Okay, okay. You can stay there for a minute, but you can't stay there forever. Got to figure out, right? You're going to just be a fighter, just blame people, or you're going to move past it. 
And I really believe that Jesus wants us to run to him. I really believe that's why he made the disciples get in the boat, you know? So I think there's three steps. We're going to run to Jesus this year. Number one, we elevate our vision. Number two, we extend an invitation. Number three, we seek deliverance. We seek deliverance. So Jesus taught there's a lot more to this world than meets the eye, right? A lot more than the physical, a lot more than the emotional, a lot more than the financial, and a lot more than the political. There is a lot more. In fact, there is a spiritual battle raging in our world. That's why it's a dark and stormy world. That's why. Because you and me have a spiritual enemy named the devil. And he comes to steal and kill and destroy. That's what he does. And one of the primary ways that he does that, the Bible talks about a spirit of fear, a specific spirit of fear. It's alive and well and at work in our world. A spirit of fear. And I want to ask you a question right now, whether this is your first time ever in church or whether you've been following Jesus for 50 years. Is there an area of your life that you just can't move past? You're scared senseless. You, 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 you have anxiety. You have this debilitating fear. Life is just passing you by and you're missing it because you're scared senseless in your life. You're scared senseless in a certain area of your life and you just can't move past it. You've elevated your vision. You've extended an invitation. And yet, this area of your life is just an area of defeat and demoralization. You're scared senseless. I want to suggest to you that as I was praying and preparing for today, there was a passage that came to my mind. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he looked at his disciples. Listen, he looked to his disciples and this is what he said. All authority, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. And it hit me. Have we taken authority over our spiritual life lately? No, I get it. Jesus loves you. Your eternity is secure. And yet for so many of us, we're not really living Life is just rolling by and we're scared senseless. And so what, what, what I want to do right now is I don't want to take the authority of Mike Manis. But I want to take the authority of Jesus over anything in your life, any power, any force, any darkness, any goal, any opposition, any obstacle in, your, in between you and the life that you were born to live. This spectacular moment... So I'm going to ask you to do something incredibly bold. If today is the day that you realize, you know what, there's something in my life, I'm stuck. I'm scared senseless in that area, and I need help. I need, I need the authority of Jesus over this area of my life. I want you to stand up right now. If you're online and you feel comfortable, you can do the same thing. Stand up because I want to pray for you right now. By the way, you notice I'm not seated. I'm standing with you. So Jesus, we take your authority. We thank you that you came before us into this spectacular moment. Jesus, you lived and you died and you rose again. You defeated darkness. You defeated despair. You defeated death. And Jesus... I'm so thankful that you brought me here. You brought me to this moment. You love me. And so right now, Jesus, I ask you, by your authority, whatever is opposing me, what, 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 whatever obstacle stands in between me and the life that I was born to live, the freedom, your word, Jesus says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Would you set me free from all of that right now? By your authority, by your power, by your victory, would I be set free? Not only to experience eternal life, but that today on January 8, 2023, I would begin to live whatever areas that, that I'm being held back or being opposed. Jesus, I pray that you would destroy anything that would oppose me, anything that would oppress me. You're good. And I love you. And I thank you. In your name. And everybody said, amen. 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 <laughs> you can all stand up, actually. I'm just messing with you. No, sit down. No, actually stand up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, 
I'm ADHD, I apologize. Everyone stand, please. I asked the band to play this song. It's just a song of faith and declaration for 2023.
Guys, I'm so grateful that we get to sing songs like that together and that they're true. It's such good news for us. It was an amazing Sunday with all of you. I hope you have a great week and come back next week, next Sunday. We can't wait to see you. Take care.